Hello governor, welcome back to this video. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to scatter points into volumes. Uh, the last tutorial I was just scattering onto surfaces. I'll be showing you a bunch of different ways of doing it. Um, and even the uh, almighty VDBs will be making an appearance. I'll be going more in depth later on with those, but for the minute it's just going to be quite simple. So first off, uh, uh, should I... I'm going to start with a 3D object. So right there I put down a file. This is just a standard GeoSOP with a file node or a file SOP inside of it. So you can create it yourself. So I went, uh, I got all my personal details stolen as I went onto 3D scans once again to get this beautiful bust of this lovely man. Uh, let's just wait for him to load. So let's go and center him. I'm going to be going more in depth with transform nodes in the future as well but for right now it's just going to be centering him and rotating him wrong rotate let's do it with the handles be professional if you hold control it will give you a little quantize uh, and i'm going to reverse this using the reverse sop this this is just going to reverse the normals so he looks white instead of blue um and now i'm going to be putting some stuff onto him and scattering points inside of them. So I'm going to turn off the grid, turn off the guides, and uh, it's all uncluttered now. As, as you can see, the topology is super heavy, but I'm going to try and muscle through this without dying. So first off, uh, you can either use an uh, ISO offset, which is going to create a fog volume for you, with a little slider here. This is essentially your quality slider. You've either got by axis or by size, which if you've used VDB, you'll be more familiar familiar with. Now with volumes, you can see that uh, these are heavy, so you're going to need to use a liberal a liberal slice of the escape key during this lesson, I imagine, just as you find what is acceptable and what's not. This division size thing this will change uh, greatly. Let's just go back to by axis. Uh, this will change greatly depending on the scale of your scene. So if you've got a massive scene, then you're going to have to go higher. Because uh, if you go super low, like to, to what you have at this scale, then it's just going to, your PC is probably going to implode. Um, so we've got a volume now, but then what do we do? It's just as simple as scattering onto this. So I'm just going to get a scatter, click here. And there we go. He's, he's well and truly been scattered in right now. Nice. And uh, we can also do this with, as I mentioned before, VDB. You can see all these crazy options. We just need VDB from Polygon. So I'm going to do that. Replug this in. If you drag a wire, you can remap it. It's very nice. Very nice. Oh, and yeah, we're going to have to put this a bit higher. So because this uses the scale, um, I'm pretty sure this this model is like a hundred times the size of normal Houdini, so maybe we maybe we transform them down. Put them to point zero one. And that should be a lot easier. So if I just Oh jeez, super heavy. Point one maybe. Oh, Point one maybe. There we go. He is VDB now. Now this is what you call an SDF. There's two types of options you have for VDB, which is you've got SDF, which is distance, and then you've got fog or volume, which is the option that will allow us to scatter inside very easily. So if I put this on now. You can see we get a similar effect. We've, it's a bit flaky on the outside, but you can normally mess around with these exterior band voxels and get something that looks nice. You can also use SDF. This will pretty much just scatter on the surface, but you can also mess around with the exterior band to create some interesting results. As you can see, it's scattering outside, um, which is an interesting look. And you can actually combine these two if you turn on fog VDB. It will also scatter inside him as well as outside. Um, 
So yeah, he's looking interesting now. He's maybe he's maybe maybe been Thanos snapped or something. Whatever you want him to be, he is. So the last one, and probably one of my favorites, is the um, uh, points from volume. Now this is sort of he's sort of a faker. He isn't really he isn't really actually like the real deal, I guess. I'm going to probably just put this onto a sphere for the minute because I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Um, so, as you can see, this is creating like a perfect grid of spheres and it's essentially using the exact bounds of your object. It's not creating a volume as far as I'm aware. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's creating a volume. Okay, it, it's, it's real, it's real. Um, that was... That was Control F, by the way. I forgot to mention this. Can't believe I forgot to mention this. It's brilliant. You can search for nodes. So, uh, in here we have a lot of interesting options. Um, we've got ISO value, which I believe we have in ISO offset as well. The offset value, I think, is the same. And you can also subtract from the center as well. So you can get rid of the center volume. And you can also invert this. So it's just going to invert within the bounds of this object. So if I was to put down a bound, uh, is that right? Yeah. You should be able to see these are just, it's just within whatever bounds it is. So um, yeah, this is really useful. And um, it doesn't just need to be on a, a, a a 3D object, it could be on a grid as well, um, and this can help you create some interesting patterns. Actually, before I talk about that, we've got um, scatter seed and scale. If if your scale is on zero, but you turn up your seed and you're like, why is it not working? That's why we turn up this. The grid offset sort of just makes it look like it's emitting. Uh, so if I just put this on time and play it. It's got some interesting looks. Can't really think of a use for it at the moment, but um, yeah. I'm not sure if, yeah, so particle radius scale will create P scale for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, by default, there's no P scale. So if you add this, I'm middle clicking by the way when I do this, that P scale is being added. So this is your P scale right here. And um, let me go and talk about how you can scatter not on uh, 3D objects because Generally, um, volumes don't work well with uh, with like a grid or something. See if I put this on here, we've got some really weird stuff going on. And as you can see, it's not really creating any sort of, you know, dense object here. So if I put a box in, you'll see it works a little bit better. It's actually creating a volume there. But um, points from volume, don't know what it's doing, but um, you can scatter like you would normally and it does it really well as well um, so in here some options that are useful uh, if you're scattering on 2d objects is if you want to you can actually add like a hexagon to this so if you go to tetrahedral that's going to offset these so i just did escape and two so i went to the top perspective you can see that these are offset these are staggered now so if i go and get a circle um, I don't think I've used this sort before, but this is very useful by default on primitive, so there's no points here apart from in the middle. So if I turn this on to polygon, you see our points are being created. Let's go and create our nice little hexagon. And if we go here, we can rotate 30 degrees. This is the same as doing like a transform and rotating 30. Um, and then I'm going to orient this on ZX. So I'm going to go underneath it so we don't have the ugly blue side. And then I'm going to do a lovely copy to points. So first input is our primitive. Second input is our points. You can see it when you hover over. And I'm going to turn off show grid. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like first. So as you can see, we've got way too many objects. This is pretty fast considering how much geometry we have in here. Um, I know it's just like a six-sided object copied a bunch of times, but these aren't instanced or anything at the moment, so this is quite fast. So as you can see, 
The reason that I rotated this is because it's not orientated correctly. Can add some more points and, and fuck it up, but that's what it's doing. You can create a lovely little honeycomb pattern here. Um, and also you could like link the uh, the scale of this to um, to like how many there are. Uh, actually, I might show you how to do that. It could be interesting, just to show you how relative references can really speed up your workflow. So if I add a, a, a transform here, you can see that when I scale up, we're, we're just getting more and more uh, of these um, objects. And if I scale up down here, it's actually scaling up all the objects properly. So the point separation, we'd want to link to the scale somehow. So I'm going to create a new parameter. If I go to edit parameter interface up here, go and get a float. I'm going to call this mul for multiply because I'm lazy. Accept, we'll close it and accept your changes. Set this to one by default. I'm going to copy this and then we're going to times this value by relative reference. So let's just do that again. Just make sure you know. I'm going to delete that channel by doing control shift delete so we do asterisk right click and paste relative reference so now it says timesing the value and then if I go in here and do the same uh, I think we might have to subtract or something like that for this actually no it's good so there we go now we've got a nice little procedural setup right here now and I'm going to sh uh, uncheck show guide geometry so we don't have the little blue dots. And now we've got a really nice, simple procedural setup for these hexagons. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments uh, and I'll try and get back to them. See you in the next video. Bye bye.